Obviously, I'm not doing a super great job of cleaning myself up. If there's more to life than the smoking and the beers, the other things we eat, how much we chew our food. You heard of Bud Mud. Bud Mud might not actually be a bad thing. Clean out the bowels. The bowels of the devil. Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. Harriet. With an H. With a ch built in. A chariot. Harriet Iscariot. Judas. Judah. Harriet Tubman, man, I'm, I'm going to go on about this forever. I'm not going to beat the dead horse. They call it beating the dead horse. Well, if it's dead, who gives a fuck? Beat it. Beat it, dudes. Beat it. Beat it. Dash dot. A. A. The Shruti. People talk about um, A having been defined as 432, and then the Nazis decided uh, to 440. On Wikipedia, A is less than that, doesn't quite reach 440. It's different. The Indians. Harriet Tubman is the beginning of the new religion. Already happened. When I said before that World War III was already won, it hasn't necessarily been won. But, you know, as all these potentialities curve in a cloud through time, and condense upon the moments of the timeline. Those who can peer through time can see what's possible in the future and what's definite in the future. Some things in the future are definite. So when I say we've already won World War III and now we're in World War IV, what I mean is like it might be in the next 100, 200, 300 years. It might be 10 years from now, it might be tomorrow. But what I know is that those who can peer through time and they exist, I mean they are. They're more real than me and anything you could think that's how real they are. I don't suggest smoking, but If it keeps the demons at bay, do it. Because the demons are all, are beyond all of this. The demons are God's bad dream. The demons are our bad thoughts, God's bad thoughts. Us as a piece of God, our bad thoughts. Demons are necessary because of the God of gods allowing free will. Demon from Mon One. Demons are God's bad dream. But they also exist for real in the world. When we're doing this, our dreams are prophecies. They are. 
and if we learn to decode our archetypes. You know, they say dreams only happen in REM sleep, but that's not true. It's not true. Those, like, wisp dreams of twilight sleep, when you first wake up, if you, if you don't have your alarm go off, right? When you're coming out of that dream world, or when you're going into that dream world, when you're going to sleep, when you're halfway in between, just like the sphere of the earth is shown by the sun. So half of the earth is always illuminated by the day and half is always illuminated by the darkness. We won't talk about the moon for now. But if we picture a sphere, and especially an earth sphere where there's mountains and valleys, I mean, it's very slight, very slight, but it's a fuzzy edge, that horizon line, is always a circle wrapping around the globe. That's the twilight sleep. And there's so much truth there. It's where the light meets the dark. But there's, there's two different types of light, two different types of dark, one way of thinking. And then there's that fifth thing, the governing principle. I wasn't going to say any of that, but I did. So what I was going to say is capos always remind me of the traveling Wilburys. Because there's that one song where the dudes are on a train. And Tom Petty says something about being a bunch of capos. I got two. I got my second one because I'd used my first one so much at the indentations of the strings carved up the rubber. But I was going to share the song I'm working on. And what's it got to do with? These days, everything's got to do with Agnes. Oh yeah. And um, these are really old strings, a few of the wound. I guess anybody who plays guitar, I don't know what, it, what it's called, but you got the, the couple silver ones, and then you got the bronze ones with little wires wrapped around another wire. wire. These ones are wicked old, like, how old are these strings? Probably three years old. And on average, I'd say I play my guitar on average 45 minutes a day and I'm not good I don't really study music but I'm looking for a different type of music I guess some of my old videos am I recording yep I guess some of my old videos um, would speak to that 6602 the 6605 which has to do with x to the x um uh split into uh 20 seconds uh at five inches on one blah 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 whatever I, I got that all in the past i got a little more to do with it and um the other day um planes were um graphing that image in the sky everything's connected believe it it's hard for me to believe when you cross from faith to belief to knowledge, it's it's like that. It's like that that twilight ring that surrounds the globe of the earth at all times. It's a fuzzy edge. So you're always it's like the stock market. You're trending, but you zigzag and you go down and you go up, but you're trending. Right? I'm trending. But I thought I'd share a song I'm working on. Because it has to do with Aesop and Agnes. And, you know, I'm trying to uh, build this story so, you know, as uh, 
Aesop travels from Ethiopia, he runs into, uh, well, he, Aesop is told, never mind, before Aesop, Aesop, Dread Pirate Roberts Aesop is, is told to travel to the Caucasus Mountains to save Agnes and see her west to Diogenes. So, and I guess Diogenes would be the wizard from the Wizard of Oz. Kind of. So I'm trying to build my triumvirate of wise men. And I'm thinking Aesop runs into Zoroaster. Zorro! Zarathustra. And when, he, when Aesop meets Zoro, Zoroaster, Zarathustra, along comes Sun Tzu. The art of war. Warriors of peace. To kill that fucking monster inside us. But it's a shared monster. The monster inside us is the monster inside you. Why are the masters masters? Why are the nomads who travel around the world? The masters, the maestros, the music makers, like David, simple songs from the tribe of light, sound, the part of the body that looks like a snail. Because if you push both ears together, that's where we spiraled out from. We're top heavy. We're top heavy because the center of the cosmos the perfect circle is an infinite circle. The segments of the perfect circle are in perspective, they're exponential. So we're an egg. And mystics throughout the ages have talked about the luminous egg that we exist inside of. Anyway, yeah, the Aesop and Agnes, Zoroaster and Sun Tzu, I was thinking about Leo so but Oh yeah, and um my high E string broke a long time ago. I just leave it hanging. Like year a couple years ago. A year ago, a couple years ago. But I leave it hanging because it makes cool sounds. Also, on the way to coming about with six strings, it's like, it's making me focus more on these strings, which I've neglected because I, I had always focused so much on these strings and these strings, so now I focus a little more on the middle strings, because I'm not a musician, I don't really study music. I had a few years of band in junior high, um, three years of band playing the saxophone, real bad, but um. It's a little bit Irish in a minor key. Actually, I don't even know if it's a minor key, but it sounds like a minor key. I'm just working on it.
just still working on it. But it's free soft and Agnes. Tough tone. <clears throat> One thing I didn't get to yesterday. Oh boy. I don't necessarily want to do this still, as I've said before, but I do. Fuck it. Charles Purse. I got two books on Charles Purse. I don't know much about philosophy. I just love this guy. A lot of the same writings are in each book. This is him old. This is him young. And I thought, I'm not sure. Am I going to get this? I hope so. Where am I at? All right. I thought I was a nice... I thought I was a nice uh, blend of the two. I got my young... my young Charles Purse hair on the top and my old Charles Purse on the bottom. And he had a great quote on... Um, Uh, if, if, if idealism, wait, if, if ideal, no, if materialism without idealism is blind, idealism without materialism is void, which is a reference in a way to Aristotle. I thought I was against Aristotle, but I was wrong. Because they said Aristotle was a materialist, but he wasn't. And to me, Aristotle, it's just like Aesop, like, for me, Aesop, uh, Aesop was a black dude, Basically, for me, Aesop was a little bit stronger of a version of the character at the beginning of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? The guy on the train tracks. To me, that's what Aesop looks like. And to me, what um, Aristotle looks like is a little bit like, forgive me for this, this is going to sound racist. But it's just, I can't, we all have images in our mind. For me, if you took like Dr. Dre, Jay-Z, and uh, the black slave on, in the movie Cloud Atlas, if you kind of like morphed those three faces together, like that's my, that's what I think Aristotle looks like. Just for what it's worth. And, uh, he wasn't just a materialist. When we talked about the body or having to have a body, what he meant was individual, a little soul of the big soul, a point of perspective. So, if you reincarnate, if you resurrect, whatever, whatever that case may be, you know, you're a capillary of the system. You're a cell in the body, but you're a cell. And if you go into other dimensions and this and that, and we should also remember that the Greeks talked a lot about teleurgy. Teleurgy is some fucked up shit. And it's all buried in all that old stuff. That's what they were after. That's what they were always after. The truth of truths. 
ain't nothing that's outside of it. Nothing. That comes into the whole idea with Aesop, and I said, like, Ethiopians is the masters of the base system. It has to do with their mass. Uh, math. I don't just mean, like, the base. Boom, boom. But I mean, like, base 2, binary, base 16, base 10, base 12, infinite bases, and a zero base, and powers, which relates back, to, for me, to Pascal, who said, like, there aren't many men, you know, and he was speaking of, like, learned mathematicians at the time when negative numbers and I were coming into the discussion, was that if you take, I can't remember if he said 440 or 400, but, you know, I'll say it a different way. If you take 3 away from 2, or I'm sorry, if you take 32, 23, if you take anything away from 0, you're still left with 0. But negative numbers do exist as negative exponents. So, when you bring Ethiopia and Greece together, then you get a base system plus a ratio, ration, rat, splinter, from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This heads back to what I said yesterday about Diogenes. You have these Renaissance masters, and who is their master? Splinter, a rat, a rodent, an Eastern garb. I'm sure I left a few, more than a few, hang-ons there. But I'm just going to go with it. Oh, hey. How we doing on time? Only 24 minutes, all right. I'm feeling a little, whew. Samson gets me lifted. All right. Samson. Samson and Delilah. Samson, who regained his strength by growing out his hair. 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 The age of Aquarius. Hair. Harriet Tubman. Harriet. Iscariot. Tubman, the man with the pitcher of water, except Harry had a whole tub. She is the symbol. I don't know what's coming, but she's the symbol of it. She had a she had a third eye, a third eye carved in her forehead. But it wasn't a light, it was a depth, it was a shadow, because she's from the depths. Because she can feel the world's hurt and pain. Because we kill each other, and we kill animals. Beasts. B-E-A. Beatitudes. Beauty. We're meant to lift them up as we're meant to lift each other up. I was laying out some more stuff from last night. Uh, my previous video, I posted it today, but I made it last night. I felt real bad about it. I felt horrible about it. Then I watched it and I was like, yeah, actually I kind of like it. So I talked about Michelangelo. Now I don't know the timeline, but to me, 
you know, because if you have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there's those four masters of the Renaissance. Turtles all the way down. Not all the way down. We talk about the four masters of the Renaissance as represented in the as represented in uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, who had an Eastern master, just like Jesus had the three wise men, who's a rat, a rodent, a little person, rat, part of rational, which is fractions as they relate to geometry. All that good. Unleavened bread, fairy beer, berry without the beer. Bread, bird, bard. Shakespeare. But who is the bard of bards? Aesop. I'm just going, going to go right ahead and say it. Black Ace Off. And if you don't like it, tough noogies. Caravaggio. In my mind, fuck the timeline. Caravaggio, he was the silver lining at the edge of the Renaissance. He was the twilight sleep at the edge of the Renaissance, at, at the edge of the Renaissance, pre-enlightenment. Shit. So, here we have the incredulity of St. Thomas. Now, people among the Christian folk Sometimes don't like Thomas the Doubter. Thomas the Doubter here is the one sticking his finger in Jesus because he had to feel the wound to know it's real. Right? And a lot of Christians hate the Doubter, that you have to believe, that you have to know. Right? Look what's actually happening here. This is what Caravaggio is telling us. You don't think he has something to say? This isn't a great replication of the painting as I'm recording it, but, um, yeah, I think somebody, like, who could paint this back then, before you could go buy paint supplies at the paint store, when you actually had to be a chemist in order to understand how to make something, make pigments, make paints, make mediums that are archival, you know, go grind up your bones and grab your, you know, pigments from plants and find a medium to put them in, you know, make a canvas yourself by hand, uh, carve down the wood before there were skill saws and chainsaws and all this stuff, make your stretcher, stretch your canvas. That's what these dudes had to do. I mean, not necessarily, but I'm telling you, they knew how to do that and a whole fuck of a lot more. <laughs> um, but look what he's actually doing. Thomas had to feel the wound, but Jesus is guiding his hand. Jesus is the puppet master. Thomas, doubting Thomas, is the only one brave enough to ask the question, are you fucking shitting me? That's what, that's what he's saying. Are you fucking shitting me? And Jesus is saying, good. Good for you. Good for you for questioning. Because one of the things about magic, about wizardry, about discipleship, about apostolicism, about, uh, you know, climbing that ladder, that stairway to heaven, is that sh shit that is absolutely real. Like magic. Magic, the true magicians are those who are so reasonable and so rational that they can do things that you couldn't dream of and you would think was magic because they can think so fast. And more than that, but they can think faster than a hummingbird. They'll know today what a hummingbird's thinking tomorrow 
when it flies by you. Think I'm shitting you? I ain't shitting you. Anyway, what Jesus is doing is he's taking down that broken old man. Now the other, the others, they're behind. They're watching. They're not brave enough to question. Are you shitting me? But Thomas is. And Jesus is guiding his hand. Jesus is saying, here, touch me. Here, the proof. It's also a symbol to mathematics, which has to do with the idea of meats and rational meats of geometry. Because when you start drawing with lines and circles, not every, not every two lines that cross on a plane actually touch each other. Because when you start doing geometry on a plane, you're actually peering into three dimensions. So you have to know math, and you have to do the, the rational... You have to do the rational, like, old school Greek, plus old school past that, but... Um, calculations to know whether two lines actually cross. They look like they cross, but they don't. Some lines that cross are parallel lines, in a sense. Um, so yeah, Jesus is guiding Thomas's hand, saying like, yeah, question, yeah, look for proof, yes. When you see two lines cross, you make sure they meet. And old tough Tom, he's wary, but he's doing it. And he's letting the masters guide him, the puppet master. But the puppet master is a puppet who's trying to turn you into a puppet master of God. Simple as that. Caravaggio. And old sister Wendy. Kick-ass book, man. I only saw her show that was on PBS a couple times, but it was kick-ass. What a pleasant woman. Uh, but anyway, she said, This is a picture based on hands. Hand. Man. Manus. What we do with our hands. Plural of mans. Men. Meant. Mind. What we do with our mind. What we choose to do. Today, this is what I'm choosing to do with my hands. It's sloppy. But the intent is pretty good, if I do say so myself. Um, I'll feel bad about saying that later. I'm going to save that page. Credulity without credit. Why? Why is St. Thomas incredulous? Because he doesn't have any credit. He's not credit worthy. Why? Because he's got the money. Like Dave Ramsey. All right. Still want to get to, still want to get to the yin yang. That's what I'm trying to get to. The golden spike. The Chinese and the Irish. That should be a proud union. What unlikely, what an unlikely duo. Can't compare apples to oranges. The only thing you can compare are things that aren't alike. Queen Anne. Queen Anne's lace. Queen Anne. Married to James. The King. House of Stuart. Stuart. Fermentation boiling something down to its essence, 
extracting the minerals in the proper, proper microbiota These are some flowers I found on my walk to go get my Sinfu accoutrement today. I was walking beside the road and I thought I smelt that lilac smell which now I associate with uh, milkweed. One day, a few years back, I smelled milkweed. And I didn't see, or I'm sorry, I smelled lilac and I couldn't find it. And it was the sweetest lilac I'd ever smelled. And then I walked and walked and there were some milkweed plants and I took a sniff and it's the most beautiful, well, I'm gonna call it a flavonoid. It's the most beautiful flavonoid I ever smelled. Anyway, now here's these flowers, and I don't know if these are like baby milkweeds, like do milkweeds flower twice? I don't know. But it has a, um, it has a um, latex, um, you know, like sumac and um, milkweed have that latex blood. Um, this does as well, but it looks different, but it has that beautiful lilac smell. So amazing. A traditional topical medicine, in Vedic medicine. Supposedly it gets rid of warts. I got one right here. But I want to look up and see what that is. Because whoever they are, they've been around the world. All these weeds growing at the fence posts on all our roads that were brought across the ocean on the Mayflower, that were brought to Jamestown. Now Jamestown is connected with Blackbeard the Pirate off the coast of North Carolina where Queen Anne's revenge was sunk. So you get the mystery of Blackbeard, the pirates, the skull and bones, one-eyed Willie, married to Queen Anne, House of Stuart, the mystery of James, Jamestown and the people who disappeared. What do I think happened to them? I know what happened to them. I don't know all of it, but I know some of it. They created that mystery way back then so that we put together the pieces now. And they could see now from then. Period. And they weren't just settlers or this or that. The real, because people talk, see, I keep saying nomads. And so please don't think of like nomadic cultures as you normally think of them. The nomads, those who don't get mad, the nomads. Who K-N-O-W, madness. They understand, they get it. They're trying to help us. The nomads, G-N-O-mads, the, the gnosis, G-N-O-S-I-S. -S. You know your system. The gnomes, the G-N-O-M-E-S, the gnomies. The little people, the leprechauns, the pygmies. Also the giants, the Amazon women, the hermaphrodites, the bearded women, the hairy people, Hare Krishna. Harry Carey, suicide, died of the flesh, stop eating flesh. The Lamb of God, as represented by St. Agnes, whose symbol is the Lamb. 
stop sacrificing sheets, sheep and goats and bulls to God. Which means stop eating them. Help them. Say, oh, well, they're just dumb animals, blah, 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 blah. You remember that girl who was um, raised, I think back in the 70s, you know, they found this girl who was basically locked in a room for a whole life until she was like maybe 13. Uh, yeah, that's a fucking lost Mary right there. And she was basically like, like a wild animal. If we treat people like slaves, they become slaves. If we have the might and the force and the strength to pound them down, they will be animals, which is an insult to animals, but you know what I mean. Galapagos Islands. If we cr create an environment where animals begin to trust us, we can lift them up. It's See, that's the problem too. In some sense, because of our hands, we're at the top, so far as we know. We're not, but we think we are. Why aren't, why haven't those at the top pounded us down? Because they get it, and they want us to get it. We can't violate free will. We can't legislate ourselves out of this. Legislation is necessary, but all legislation, whether it's in a completely tyrannical government or, or a more free government society, they're trying to give us the most, the most free will possible so that we can choose to do the right thing. And sometimes the right thing is still wrong, if it's less worse. And when I say they, it's a delicate subject. It's very subtle. Anyway, they've been all around. And they left this most obvious code. Now, our whole entire country, more or less, when you go to when you go to court, you swear on the King James Bible. When you get married, you're read. You know, the priest holds the King James Bible for the most part. I think even in Catholic churches in America, I don't know, is that wrong? I don't know. But it's it's the Bible of America. So you can say, oh, it should be this or that. But that's the fact of the matter. So, like, if you want to trace the evolution of animals and the taxonomy of things, like, there's a taxonomy of ideas. So, when you don't think about it, you don't think about it. When you think about it, when you first start getting into the conspiracy of stuff, then you learn, well, King James killed his, killed his own mother, he had a gay lover, you know, all this shit. Elizabeth before that and the House of Stuart in Scotland and Ireland and all this. And what I'm saying, behind the scenes, however the history was made, it was horseshit. Built by the masters, who've been all over. so that we could uncover it. On Sunday, right? That's when people go to church, on Sunday. And they worship on Sunday. What's one of America's favorite foods? An ice cream Sunday. And what tops off every Sunday? Whipped cream with a cherry on top. Now, they want us to stop eating dairy, but they know we're going to fucking do it anyway. So they built a code into it so we could unlock it because they're pragmatists. They're pragmaticists, just like Charles Peirce.
practical magic, things that work, getting the job done, saving everybody, every soul. No one left behind. I could have done other things. And I could have spent today doing what a very large portion of me wanted to do, which was clean myself up, clean up my apartment, get things in a certain type of order. But I've made a commitment to protect innocence. And that means putting your life on the line. So I'm not putting my life on the line the same way that a soldier does. But I am putting my life on the line because this message takes priority over my own health. So I might die before I get to where I want to go, but I also understand I won't get there if you don't get there. Kind of simple as that. Darth Vader. We can imagine, we can imagine We can imagine that this is the last this is the last thing the emperor saw before he fell into the abyss into nothingness until he as a bad dream returned to god so to speak who saved the day at the end of the first um the first triptych of star wars movies who saved the day it was darth vader Everybody always thinks Luke Skywalker was the hero. Darth Vader was the hero. Notice he's black. He's the tough Tom. He was tough enough to do the job. And who's the Emperor? The Emperor is the embodiment of God's bad dream. He's the dark side of free will. He's someone who didn't choose to do the right thing. And the God of Gods kept Darth Vader alive long enough to kill God's bad dream. Luke couldn't kill the Emperor because he was too optimistic. Now, there's a way that could be interpreted that I don't want it to be, but it's hard to speak about anything without contradictions, because we should be optimistic. But Darth Vader, he'd already lost so much of his body, so much of everything, for love for his wife who died, but he couldn't get over his anger and his, well, his anger. His want for vengeance. Darth Vader saved the day. He's tough Tom. He's Judas. He turned his back on the Jedi. But at the end of the day, where was he? He was right there beside Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Why? Because he saved the day. Why? Because he went to the darkness and the depths of hell. So that he could get the job done. Now, if you look at the, the prequels that came right after that. We know that the way in which Darth Vader accessed the dark side was by... slaughtering the underlings. And I can relate to that in so much as I 
killed a bunch of squirrels and birds with my BB gun when I was younger. I'm not in that mode of repentance at this moment, but I can tell you, I have <laughs> I've cried and cried and cried over it, and it will come again. I got more to say on that subject, now's not the time. But whether or not we killed Tweety birds and squirrels, and woodpeckers, with our BB gun. If we eat meat, we're doing it without, we're doing it anyway. Because they say, what is it, like, whoever pulls, like, the whole thing about the Nuremberg, the whole thing about the Nuremberg trial was like, uh, what, like, um, you can't say I was just following orders, right? That's not the way God thinks. God will forgive you after everything. And it's not just the one pulling the trigger. The whole chain of command is guilty. That's the truth of it. The intention. Now, you, you might have bad thoughts. You might think to yourself sometime, like, I could push that motherfucker right over the railing. You could think all kinds of things. You could think that you want to kill someone. I'm assuming most people have had that idea cross at least through their mind before they had some like, oh. or I wish that person were dead. I, I don't think you can be alive today without having that feeling cross your mind. But that's different than intent that leads to action. That's not an intent. That's that's for another time to talk about. One of the reasons why we feel murderous is because there's so much murder in the world and we're receiving it. And until it stops, we're going to. Not to say there won't still be problems, but there'll be refined problems at a higher level. There'll be bigger problems, way bigger problems than now, but they'll be less murderous and less hateful to make us stronger. Now, we might encounter, after having grown that way, a new form of hatred, even bigger, that exists, whose radar we're not on yet, but if we grow, we will become strong enough to defeat it. Well, at least I'm a little closer to the yin yang. I think this is a good place to stop. This is a good place to stop. At least I've uncovered the yin yang as it's related to plus or minus the square root of I. That's a good thing. Save Agnes. Save the cheerleader. The cheer. The good cheer. Clowns with their big red nose. Clowns who traveled in circuses all around the world. Clowns and magicians and acrobats who traveled all around. Hard work. And after the hard work of traveling around and the hard work of building that tent, they'd put on a show to make us happy. They'd make us laugh and they'd make us dazzle in wonderment at the things that the acrobats could do. Always with the idea of fun. A lot of times they 
now sometimes there were the three rings right so three ring circus we've been over the three rings or the apple circus one ring well, one ring is the first ring and first and fifth start with the same thing because the first one is phi and phi is one and we're talking about one plus the square root of five over two when we're talking about plus or minus one plus or minus five square root of five over two and how that relates to plus or minus one plus or minus the square root of three over two so there's a lot of shit I don't know about like I'll talk about Leibniz I don't know shit about calculus no more I took calculus one and a little bit of calculus two did okay but the reason why I didn't want to keep moving on and keep start and start there again or start like right through high school stuff is like I want to know the number one I want to know the number two you know I've been focusing on numbers like one two three most of my study is very small numbers you know studying up to a number like 60 though I did figure out the clock face I've yet to make the video though I've described it yeah the clown bozo bozo the clown the booby the booby prize if anybody remembers bozo the clown at the end of the show, he'd pick some guests from the studio audience and they'd get to do something. By the way, he wore all blue with a red top. Harriet Tubman, Sleepy Time Bear, Sorry Al Greco, just saying. But if you won whatever the challenge was, you'd win all these toys. And if you didn't, you got a Tootsie Roll, a lump of coal. Booby prize. Booby. But yeah, there was that song that used to be on Saturday morning cartoon commercials. Whatever it is I think I see becomes a Tootsie Roll to me. And also, by the way, chocolate. The reason why we like chocolate and it's like a whatever it is that people say it is and, and the reason why people compare it to coffee, mocha, is that it has a theobro, uh, theo, theo, theobro, an alkaloid, theobromine, theobromine, an alko, alkaloid, theo, um, bro, mine, my bro, under God, um, that's similar to the the, 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 the alkaloid in second year wild carrot root which is very woody like wooden uh, first year wild carrots the one you eat second year wild carrots more, pretty much like wood Jesus was a carpenter and um, depends how you cut it roast it just like well cut can mean different things cocaine laxative why do they put laxatives in cocaine not just to cut it because the masters are behind the whole thing and they're trying to clean out your guts that are rotten with all the fucking shit we do to ourselves like alcohol, like this, like that and the worst of all eating meat bad thoughts also but yeah, we're closer to the east now I posted something the other day on a video I made, my Snoop video, my Snoop Brave video about um, which way, which way, if you're in LA, if you're in LA, Los Angeles, which way is west? Oh, uh, yeah, which way is west? You know, the old, the old, the old adage, uh, travel, travel west, you know, to seek knowledge or whatever, you know, to, to find your adventure. Well, if, if you're in a, if you're in LA, you got to get on a boat, and if you travel west, you end up in the east. And if you go the other way, you're going east. So you just, you gotta travel west within. I guess that's kind of what Snoop represents, you know, Compton, all that stuff. Truth, 
truth truth is found in the ghettos, you know. Jesus was born in a stable, in a barn, with all the poo and the hay. That's it.